I am very stoked to have my next guest back on the program. Their band just released a brand new EP earlier this year called Future Lovers. Leandra and Jordan from The Beaches. Hi, hello. <laughs> thank you so much for doing this. Oh, thank you for having us back. Great to see you again <laughs> after so nice all these years. In person. No. <laughs> We're already starting to wrinkle from our rock and roll lifestyles. Hey, Serious. That's why the shades well, are on. Wait, wait, wait. Last year and a half, there has been no rock and roll lifestyle. Oh, yeah, it's true. It's <laughs> way sadder than that. <laughs> what, what has the rock and roll lifestyle been? Oh, Working out? During COVID? I mean, God, I got a dog with my boyfriend, so not very rock and roll. Like, was this, this was a pandemic dog? This is a pandemic dog. Like, how there's been pandemic dogs and pandemic babies. So I was like, not going to have a baby for years and years, but we can do a dog maybe. Mm -hmm. ah. <laughs> See, I like how you said dogs and babies, because now all of a sudden you put that into people's heads. It's, been a, it's a thing, though, no? Like, it it is like a thing, but now people are going to say, okay, Jordan talked about puppies and, do and babies, <laughs> yeah. and now the beaches, we have dog and... Yeah. No babies, no babies No babies, yet. no babies. And, and no no babies yet. <laughs> no. Eliza and Kylie aren't here to speak for themselves. Oh, yeah. oh no. <laughs> they both yeah. say no babies. We're too. all in COVID <laughs> relationships now, yeah. but no babies on the timeline. That's it's right. not allowed yet. <laughs> well, congratulations on that, at least. Thank, Thank you. you. Being in a relationship. How, how have relationships been? Uh, I don't know if you're living with your partner or what have you, but it must have been up and down. Uh, I'm so most of us are still too poor to live yeah. outside of our homes with our parents, so yeah. we're all at home. But Except uh, for Eliza. Eliza, yeah, our drummer, is, is living yeah. with her boyfriend, and they were, I think, for for a lot of COVID, sharing a one-bedroom apartment for like nine months, and they are both really careful about never going outside. So, I mean, they made it through <laughs> through that period of their life so it's been a while since we've seen each other mm -hmm. so let's i mean touch on a few milestones i guess and you wanted you know wanted you know we um we got to open for the rolling stones yes. which was pretty cool <laughs> yeah. what else uh met elton john met somewhere elton in there john. um we released two new eps that's right and yeah. uh the professional and future, uh, lovers. future lovers right and we went on the road with passion pit that was yeah. a while ago yeah, we've done some tours in between. Yeah, yeah. we've been <laughs> rocking and rolling, working. <laughs> but 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 the, talking about those iconic names like the Rolling Stones and Elton John, being aware that the beaches exist and who have listened to of your to your music, right? Did Mick Jagger handpick you? How does that process work of your opening for us? Um, he didn't. I think uh, AEG, AEG picked us. Yes. Uh, with our friends, the Glorious Sons. So it's just a huge opportunity. We found out about it when we were in Minneapolis on the road to the Passion Pit, and we were all screaming. It was pretty. It was pretty like earth shattering because it's something that like every band says is on their bucket list. Like go to the Grammys, play with the Rolling Stones. It's like the standard <laughs> kind right. of two standard. things that are like milestones or like big like in your wildest dreams. What could you accomplish? So to have that opportunity so early on. Um, in our careers has been so cool and we actually like I got a little kiss from Mick Jagger on the cheek what yeah. <laughs> well yeah and we, we were both wearing like big sparkly outfits so we, we <laughs> complimented each other's style it was very very weird my mom got to watch it happen too she was she like, documented the whole doc thing well I don't think she was allowed to yeah we, we weren't allowed, we were allowed to but allowed we did to get a photo phones. together yeah but we did get a photo with wow. them and they were really nice and so we sweet. didn't expect them to watch our set but i think that they did and like i think at one point during our show kylie's guitar amp like was on the fritz or like it was just mess messing up so um and it was just before she was about to do a solo and my uh, guitar tech just like quickly changed the amps and she was able to get it done and they brought that up so like they clearly had seen us perform that which was so yeah Mick was like I hate when that happens <laughs> that's so refreshing so cool. you know the, these these veteran bands let's call them that yeah. right <laughs> to be able to identify it and, and gravitate towards the younger bands who are still on the come up like yourselves yeah. you know the Foo Fighters just did that with a band called Rad Key uh, who are out of Kansas City three brothers of color that you know make some amazing music but aren't getting that much attention yeah right and it's just i don't know to me as a music fan i that warms my heart no i love hearing that too it's it's really nice to like share and try to lift up other artists like that's something actually elton john said to us too because he didn't like have to i think he we met him because he liked our band and put it on his um 
his podcast or his, yeah. his uh, Apple, Apple, music, Apple show. music show. And he like hand selects all the music that goes into it. Like re- record labels will send him stuff and he'll hand select his favorite his favorite artists and and feature them on his show and give them an opportunity to like get some more attention and i think i just asked him like well why do you do this like you must be so busy like why do you hand select all these bands and he's like i got a lot of help from from my heroes when i was starting out so i feel like it's like a duty and a privilege to to offer younger bands the same opportunity and that's something that's always moved me a lot about him and something that we can hopefully do one day if we <laughs> ever get there. Yeah. You know? Well, it's not like you were resting on your laurels either. You just talked about how you released a couple of EPs oh, yeah, over no. the course of last year, <laughs> no. right? You're you are like, okay, well, towards the Rolling Stones. Yeah. yeah no. Work is done here. No, you always got to hustle. I think we all like to work too. We feel we're so happy that we're able to work again. Right. Yeah. So the new EP, which was released back in May, is a little bit of a a maturation. Let's call it. Thank you. For the beaches, I feel not only sonically but also lyrically, uh, a song like "Let's Go," for example, <laughs> right, really sticks it to the boys out there that are dominating the industry. Uh, how long has that song been in the works? Because I feel like that's something you might have encountered pretty much since the day you created the band. Yeah, yeah, I think like that song is supposed to be like a relatable song to all musicians, like because it is about, but it is morally more about like our unique experience being young women. Um, we've been playing with that idea for a while. I think I was hesitant to to release a song that's so critical because I feel like we have been so privileged with like the opportunities that we've been given. But it still is like always. That's why I put that line in like about boys telling us what to write about because that's sort of where I find like I personally take offense when someone is like you'll be more successful if you stop talking about you know all your girl problems right right (laughs) just like it doesn't really matter like when you're an artist you should write about what you want to write about regardless of you know who you are I don't know yeah yeah Yeah. I don't know do you want to talk about that one at all? I was looking all? at the fountain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, was, I was thinking about uh, how someone said to us like that they wouldn't listen to that song because it was too girly. Yeah. Because we like really? said girl said stuff. stuff. It's still something that you encounter. They're like, talk about your small <laughs> instead. You know, sorry if this is a family <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. My mom is watching. <laughs> but it's true. Like they're much, they're very happy for you to like talk about your personal life or your sex life but right 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 <laughs> but as soon as you start but you know talking it's, about it's so hypocritical <laughs> like not to go off on this you know huge tangent but i mean it's the same reaction to wap right that they had last year they're like oh how dare these women rap about these personal female and like you if you take it as like a feminist song which i do but like i also think like wap is just really funny like it's like it's like it's like how Big Butts is also funny, you know? Like they, they, to me, in the same ilk. And like what people weren't getting about that song is like, yes, it is like a feminist anthem, but it's also like they're kind of joking about right. it. Right? Bucket and a mop, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a brilliant song. Oh my god! It is a masterpiece. Get, yeah, it's just like. You know, if you hear other bands talking about war and violence and horrible things, and then you're talking about like these two women that are rapping about their genitals, <laughs> it's like there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but dudes all. do it all the time. And they so. do, dudes like, do it too. Right. Yeah. 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 Bring it. It's a good conversation to be had, though. Obviously, you're on tour right now at the time of this filming with uh, some very legendary oh, yeah. folks. <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Jimmy World. Taking, taking back, back Sunday. Sunday. Oh man, it's Conic. been a thrill. That's why I'm wearing my Jenga's right now. <laughs> Wait, that was that. These predate them, don't they? By a couple I don't years. Know what a Jenga is they're other like, than the game? They're like the white. These are Jinko pit. jeans, right? Oh, Jinko! Yeah. Oh my god! Jenga. Yeah. Jenga. Yeah. Are you sure you're a millennial? No. <laughs> yeah. I think you're a boomer. I might be a boomer. <laughs> oh god. Jinko. Is that a J N C O? Yeah. Oh god. I'm wearing my twister Jeez. pants. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know skater pants. Let's just call them that. Then. Has there has there been much interaction with Jim and? Yeah, well, we played a, we played a show, like I don't know, two years ago, Taking Back Sunday, like a Christmas market thing that they were organizing for um, a charity that they work with in New Jersey. Um, so we got to talk to them a lot that night. Yeah, we had we had a party that night. Had a party that night, and because of COVID, like I think the bands, everyone's trying to be 
as careful as possible and stay in their bubble with, like so we have like we've had like a couple um encounters with them in like the hallways they've been so nice to us and accommodating and very um um they they like to they they watched our show a couple times which is always so nice and we got to watch theirs but yeah no it's been so fun it's always just like mind blowing <laughs> my my guy friends in Toronto are so jealous oh I can imagine Toronto. yeah <laughs> for fans of the beaches like me uh, what's on tap in terms of the new music because you know these EPs were basically the music was created uh-huh. during the same period of time right so it's been a while well we've written we've written an, an album's worth of songs and we're about to am we're I hitting, to say this like I don't know I posted it we're hitting the studio oh, yeah. after the last show here yeah. so we're gonna be in LA for two, two weeks, weeks writing this rec- amazing or not writing we wrote produ- yeah producing, producing Jackknife it. will be producing yeah a, th- a third one with him um, but an album right full, yeah, full album. album yeah we definitely yes. want an album there's a lot of EPs flying around right well it would yeah feel, it would feel good to have an album we wanted the we last, wanted one, to the be last an album. one to be an album COVID COVID oh, the, the messed COVID. it up COVID the idea Dirty. is like a lot of a lot of um, artists nowadays are sort of putting their al- album out in sections because albums have such short shelf lives online because of things like TikTok. <laughs> we but, love you, TikTok. Um, so it's smart to kind of break it up. So that was the idea. We would do uh, the album in, as like two EPs, but then COVID happened and enough time passed and we were like, we should probably m- make these separate so that this feels fresh. <laughs> well, I'm really looking forward to that. And oh, thank you. especially thank you. the show tonight. I'm so thank stoked. you. Are, Are you coming? coming? Uh, am I on the list? <laughs> we oh, will get, get you, you on, on that. The list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's on the list. I mean, I won't be backstage or anything. I just want to see the show. For sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. We'll try to, we'll, we'll work that out. Let's, let's, let's do that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But I yes. really appreciate the time. And well, my best to Eliza and Kylie. Yeah, of thanks Thank for you having so much us for today. having us. This is really nice. Yeah, great We're to catch melting up. Melting some yeah. way over here now. Yeah, I, know, I appreciate <laughs> it. It's uh, Leandra and Jordan of the Beaches. You're watching B Sides. Bye. Woo.